Pray with me if you care to. Gracious Lord, we come here this afternoon asking you for guidance and direction as we set out to do the business of Union County. We ask a special prayer of protection over our law enforcement, military, and those continuing to serve on the front lines of all that is happening in our county, state, and country. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to call on Deputy County Manager Michelle Lancaster, who has a few words for you to open this public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Um, Commissioners, this afternoon you have the proposed operating capital budget public hearing for FY 2021. You received the proposed operating and capital budget on June 1st, and today is an opportunity for you to receive public comments. And with that, I'll let you go proceed with the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would say good evening, but it's afternoon. So I'll say good afternoon. I would like in my part of the presentation, I'll be discussing state mandates and requirements where we don't have any choice, increasing costs and state mandated programs that we have to address at UCPS. Number one, our uh, uh, significant cost of utilities. Uh, we ex have an expectation of an increase of 775,000, which includes 240,000 with water and sewer. And those, those uh, anticipated costs have not been raised in several years. We also have a state mandated HR finance software upgrade, of which is partially funded by the state, but we're uh, locally on the hook for 330 some odd thousand. We also anticipate an increase in charter payments of some $450,000 to uh, charter school students in Union County, and that budget we anticipate in total will be $9.2 million. Uh, several years ago, the state came out with a mandate of uh, decreasing K through three classroom sizes. And in order to meet that unfunded mandate and maintain other classrooms in other grades in an appropriate fashion, we are looking for 1.770 million in order to meet that mandate. We also uh, have, as you know, state employees and also have local employees. And when the state benefits change, we have to compensate equally on our local employees and we're being getting numbers back from the state that is forecasting that at about 8.5% or a total of $850,000. The total of these mandates over last year equals some uh, $4.2 million. 
And then I'm going to turn it over to our vice chair, Ms. Heintel, for uh, the next part. Oh, Ms. Merrill. Yeah. I'll, I'll turn that over to our board chair, Ms. Merrill. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. I am here today to advocate for our employees. And I want to thank um, Chairman Simpson and Vice Chair Ray for meeting with us last week to go over um, our budget and to um, have a face to face conversation with you since our um, joint meeting was canceled due to COVID 19. I want to remind everyone that we are um, Union County's largest employer. Union County Public Schools. We are the sixth largest school district in the state of North Carolina. And according to different surveys in the state, we are the third um, best performing school district out of 115 school districts in North Carolina. We consistently come in third place. And it should also always be mentioned that number one um, has around 12,000 students. Number two has around 4,000 students and Union County Public Schools proudly has approximately 42,000 students. And we, um, we take great pride in the position we have in the state of North Carolina. The reason I'm here today is to advocate um, for our school nurses, psychologists, and social workers who have not had a local supplement increase since 2012. We are by large numbers, losing them monthly to CMS. And um, we need to do something about this. I think two, um, eight years is a pretty good time to reevaluate this. Uh, for our transportation department, we are asking um, to increase the supplements for our drivers, mechanics, and our facilities workers. As you remember, you worked with us um, back in 2017 to help get them um, an increase. But unfortunately, as soon as Union County did that for our drivers, everyone around us um, gave increases, uh, increases to their drivers um, to offer more. So that's where we are uh, three years later. Um, we're still losing bus drivers and um, we're losing them to CMS, Anson County, South Carolina, and unfortunately, most of our um, are leaving to come here to Union County um, government. So that's probably something we need to discuss at a later date. Um, and it's because of their hourly wages are higher here than what we're able to offer. The most important thing that I want to talk to you uh, today about is our classroom teachers. In 2018, for local supplements, Union County Public Schools classroom teachers ranked number 12 in North Carolina. As of this past year, 2020, we have lost ground and our teachers' local supplement is now between number 16 and 17 in the state. So we are, each year, we are losing significant ground in our local supplement. The budget that we have presented to you is for a is to give each one of our teachers, approximately 2,500 teachers, a $1,000 increase to their local supplement because we are losing them to surrounding counties and the border for South Carolina. Um, with this $1,000 increase that is before you today would bring us to number nine. And I feel like um, if we were number, tw number 12 in 2018 for 2020, 21, if we could um, agree to do this in our budget with your approval, I think that would go a long way with what our classroom teachers are having to go through, having um, classrooms in their home. They're, um, they've had to learn overnight at the snap of a hat how to go from teaching face-to-face to teaching virtually and um, once again, Union County Public School teachers um, did a phenomenal job and I, I think it's, we need to reward them for that and, and improve our position in the state. This is a critical need for Union County Public Schools. 
we're losing not only our salary employees, but again, our hourly employees. You have told us over the past few years that if there is anything we need to come to you and let you know, and last year, 2019, 2020, was a very difficult year to financially manage on a 2018 budget from the state. And if we go in to, and, and we did not come to you to ask for anything more last year. We, we made the numbers work. But I stand before you today to let you know that if we go in to 2020, 2021, on a 2018 budget, our county's going to be in trouble. And I just want to petition you today that you said to come to you if we need something. So I stand before you today saying we need your help. If this budget is not approved, if we don't find some way to work with, we will be forced to eliminate positions and programs and you will no longer have one of the best public school districts in the state. Mine's a short one. I got capital. So um, this year's capital is a lot similar to last year's capital. Um, for facilities, each year was about $16.3 million. The capital for this year includes um, money to purchase land for a new Forest Hills High School. Transportation is about the same as last year for vehicles and bus cameras. Technology is a little bit less than this year. Um, last year, we had um, about $1.3 million in the budget for a refresh on our smart, smart boards in all of our classrooms. This year was supposed to be the second year of that program. Unfortunately, we had to cut it out of our budget because we needed to get um, new computers, laptops, Chromebooks, for our students in grades three through five. When this year, when school shut down on March 13th and everything went to remote, learning, we were unable to give our three through fifth grade students laptops to take home. They were too fragile. We're having tr um, trouble getting parts from China and other places to fix the existing ones. So you will see that's why the technology ask went down year over year. Is And we're asking in um, the consent uh, agenda today for um, permission to go ahead and do a lease for four years for the three through five um, laptops because it's probably a given that at some point next year we're going to be in a remote learning position and we'll need those for our students. The co-curricular is just another year of band uniforms and instruments for schools. This year is Parkwood Middle School, I mean high school, excuse me, um, and that's about it in the budget, uh, in the capital budget unless anyone has any questions. Um, in this year's um, capital you'll notice some things that um, that, we're, that we'll say that we're doing it in-house, which would just be for the um, materials that we would need to do it. A lot of our schools have been cleaned and ready for next school year because we let out on March 13th, so our maintenance and facilities crew is doing some projects for us this summer. So um, the, it, was it would just be for the materials for the projects. And again, to echo what Mr. Seitz and Mrs. Merrill said, um, we're still working on a 2018-19 state budget. We made it work for last year. We're hoping at least to get the same this year, but we don't know. We don't know what budgets are going to look like for next year. We're still awaiting the state legislature, and we'll see what happens then. The other thing is that we've received some information from the state, from the governor and from the um, health director regarding school next year. They're going to make a decision on July 1st, but a lot of it um, all of it requires, all three plans, requires temperature of every student and staff that enters our building every single day and enters our bus every single day. So I'm not really clear how we're going to pay for all the PPE that we're going to need for next year depending on the projects or on, on the plan that is chosen by the governor. So thank you. I appreciate your interest. Is there anyone else here that wanted to speak on the uh, budget? 
during the public hearing. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. That takes us to our informal comments. We had no one to sign up for informal comments. So that will take us to our additions, deletions, and adoption of the agenda. Commissioner, Commissioner Rushing. Motion to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Make that item uh, 36A under old business. Need a motion to approve consent. Good. Have a motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Right. Takes us to old business. CZ 2019-014, Oakton Mixed Use. I'll just give you a quick recap. Um, this public hearing uh, for this item was held at the last uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. Um, the applicant presented a, a short uh, presentation regarding the development. It's a 46 unit um, age restricted um, duplex, triplex, almost like a townhome style development with approximately two acres in the front uh, that was going to be designated as commercial. Um, again, some of the conditions were it would be age restricted, uh, the residential portion, and then the commercial portion did not have any uses specified um, for, the, um, for the use, but uh, there was a condition that said that when that commercial use was identified, um, they would have a TIA uh, prepared um, to look at the traffic impacts. Um, like I said, the, uh, the applicant was here last time, made a short presentation, and there was one um, uh, resident that spoke in opposition. Uh, their primary concern was traffic. Um, and the planning board um, did um, recommend to deny the petition. If you have any questions for me, I'll be happy to answer. I believe if you have any questions for the applicant, they're here as well. Thank you, Lee. Questions for Lee? Mr. Hill? Yeah, Lee, uh, yes, sir. you said it's age restricted. Yes, sir. That's a very broad statement. Uh, you know, there's age restricted, there's deed restricted, you can have kids, you can't have kids. I don't know. Sure. I don't think it has been clarified in this process. Uh, secondly, uh, you say the TI, if we, we approve it, then they'll have a TIA done. That would be specifically for the commercial portion. So, um, the, the problem with trying to require the TIA up front was we didn't know the applicant didn't present an actual use for the commercial property. Yep. So it was, you, you can't do the TIA without knowing what that use is. So the condition that was offered by the applicant was to come back and do the TIA once that commercial use was known. That's a corridor that's the most crammed together, yes, sir. running late, and we, we, we've learned from experience that we can't count on the DOT delivering, so. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Lee. Okay. I'll make a motion to deny the request to adopt the consistency statement rejecting the zoning petition ZZ 2019-19-014 to rezone the property appearing on tax map as parcels 0615900306159003 c and 0615900003E in the Waxhaw Township the property from R40 to R4CZ and B2CZ as inconsistent with the current Union County Comprehensive Plan and deny the rezoning position CZ 2019-014 to rezone the properties from R40 to R4 CZ and B2 CZ. 
Okay, we have a motion discussion. Hearing none, we'll take a vote. The motion is to deny the request. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Rushing. Item 32. Heard the motion. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Takes us to item 37, appointments to boards and committees. We have several of those this evening, uh, most of them being uh, re uh, reapplications or applications for reappointment. First of those, Agriculture Advisory Board, Hunter Latham. I have a motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Aging Advisory Committee. Uh, oops, I'm about to miss one. Juvenile Crime Prevention. I'm sorry. You have a motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Yes. Yes, I think we do. Correct, Ms. West. Point, Mr. Bradshaw, in that position. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. The Region F Adva uh, Aging Advisory Committee. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Central Line Workforce Development Board. Motion to appoint Mr. Walls. Ms. Mary Walls, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, David Spafford, Mike Como. Uh, both have reapplied. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Takes us to item uh, 38, Union County Public School 2020 School Construction Bond Proposal. Mr. Chairman, I um, believe we have representatives from the Union County Public Schools with us to uh, do a presentation on their school construction bond request. And we'll follow that with Ms. Beverly Lyles uh, with a presentation on Union County, uh, current Union County debt. Uh, and then I have comments uh, following Ms. Lyles' presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Make it full screen or no? Good afternoon again. Kathy Heintel from uh, the Union County Board of Education. I'm the Vice Chair and the Facilities Committee Chair. So I'm gonna do the presentation for you. We talked back in February about a bond for our older schools. We have five high schools with six that are 60 plus years of age and we have some inequity in our facilities and some inadequacy with respect to modern day high schools. So the bond that is before you for $129.5 million, the biggest item on the list is Forest Hills High School, which we've talked to about. It's 60 plus years old. 
its um, current land isn't big enough to do any major uh, renovations on it or additions to it. It's just not suited to a modern, modern day high school. The other, um, what we would do with Forest Hills High School is take East Union Middle School, which is, is um, also inadequate and was built in 1952, and put them into the old Forest Hills High School so that both the middle school and the high school were on the same campus like seven of our other clusters have. So they can share fields and things like that. We would still use the old main gym that was built um, in 2010, and we would continue to use the stadium that's at um, Forest Hills High School. Um, the next item on the, on the bond would be the East Union middle, uh, just the design phase, because we would ask for another bond in a couple years to take care of the renovations to Forest Hills, but uh, the old Forest Hills. The idea is to build the new high school, move the students into the new high school, and then re renovate the old high school for East Union Middle School. The next item is the Porter Ridge High School and Marvin Ridge High School. They were um, both designed with a central, central plant where all the HVAC and all that stuff is, is housed. And that's where the bus uh, lot is as well, and we would like to add some things to that, bathrooms and meeting spaces for the bus drivers. So that would be those two things, as well as um, field houses for those two high schools. So the only two in Union County that don't have uh, field houses currently. East Elementary is the next project, and it was built in 1950 originally, and it has some issues with it as well. And anyone who wants a, uh, to go to the schools and see them, we'd be happy to show you. The idea would be to move um, pre-K program out of Walter Bickett Ed Center and move it into East Elementary after we, after we built a new school. So we have some schools like Walter Bickett Ed Center and South Providence that are having some that are aging as well. So it was taking care of that as well. The other one would be Parkwood High School, another one of our high schools that was built in 1960. Um, we would like to buy some land, some more land, and uh, do the design for a new high school for Parkwood High School. The next is Cuthbertson Middle School. Um, I would say that one area where our demographer was a little off would be the Cuthbertson cluster. Um, we, are, we have four um, MCRs at Cuthbertson Middle right now. We'd like to add five additional classrooms like we did to Porter Ridge Middle School last year on the 2016 bond. And then the other is that we have a bond contingency for 3%. So in putting together the base costs of some of these, of these projects, um, our staff went out and talked to people in other counties in North Carolina and South Carolina on how their bids were going and what their projections were and where we were gonna go, and that's from a square foot per perspective, how we were gonna do our costing on these projects. Um, our, our, just to give you an update on our 2016 bond, which was our last bond, um, $54 million. We have two projects remaining, Sun Valley High School and the Transportation um, Center, and those should be uh, substantially complete this summer. We appreciate you listening, and we appreciate your support of the bond. Any questions? Anything? Commissioner Rush. Um, Santel, the um, what kind of capacities are we going to be increasing with this with these bonds? What kind of numbers of students are we going to be able to serve in addition? Well, East Union, um, e, um, excuse me, East Elementary will be uh, substantially larger than it currently is. I believe that they're talking about a two-story um, elementary school to house more students in it. Um, the capacity of, of Forest Hills, I don't know what it was going to be. It's about 1,300 right now. So I think we would probably go up on that, given that there may be uh, more people moving into that area with bypass. And Cuthbertson uh, Middle, you're looking at five classroom additions? Or five classroom additions with 26, 26 students in each classroom. And, and that's not replacing mobile units? That's um, it would be replacing the mobile units that are currently in use there. So it does, it, does it add capacity or...? Well, right now the capacity doesn't take into to MCRs because our capacity doesn't take into anything that's not brick and mortar. Okay. 
So, so it would increase the capacity? It would increase the capacity, okay. correct. Also with sports, um, what are, are we getting any indication from the state um, about sports and, the, and what's going to happen with sports in the state schools? Yeah, it's a great folks. question. The only thing that we've received from the North Carolina High School Athletic Association um, is that they could start conditioning and things like that on June 15th if they had all the protocol in place. Um, Union County Public Schools will be starting with conditioning and things like that, no contact, um, on July 6th, I believe. Yes, July 6th. Um, temperatures have to be taken. They have to be distanced. It can, it can be no contact. They have not talked about when that will happen. This is the first phase. And you know, back to capacity, with all the um, increased growth that has been projected or planned um, with the increase in facilities, that we're going to have um, that's going to allow for more growth. Um, why not more projects that would maybe additional schools, not just replacement of schools, but addition, additional schools? Right now, I understand what you're saying. A lot of the municipalities have um, approved a lot of high density um, developments that would add to our schools and in some places overwhelm our schools. But until some of those get going, we have no idea what's the build out of any of those subdivisions, what's going to happen. Yes, we'll have to plan for that, but it's hard to plan for it right now when all it is is a, a bunch of stuff that's the zoning that's been approved, but none of it has broken ground. We have taken, um, we get um, reports uh, or presentations every month at our facility committee meetings about each cluster and the new developments going into those clusters. We have um, reassigned some of those new subdivisions to other clusters where we think it could be problematic, particularly um, apartments. Right. So you. we're monitoring what's going on, but you're right. There's a lot of stuff that's been approved, but I hate to not do stuff for the older schools that they need to have when we're, we're talking about maybe new schools again, but how do we know that yet? We don't. Mr. Hills. Yes. Ms. Hintel. Kathy. <laughs> okay. Uh, you made reference to uh, checking with surrounding counties, see what their square footage. Do you have plans that identify what the square footage you will build? We don't have any design plans yet at all. Okay. That costs money that we don't always have to do. How'd you come up with 81 million for Forest Hills? I think that they used it's you know whatever the modern day uh, I think they were looking at about 13 or 1400 um, students in it and they used the square footage that we would have if you're talking about a larger high school we could do that we've seen no projections on what lo would look like out in Forest Hills okay where are the uh where are the athletes like a quarter inch currently dressing and preparing? They go back into the to the uh, school, to the locker rooms in the school. You mean during like a football game? Prior so to the game, yeah. Por if you've been to Porter Ridge's campus, it's it's a it's a decent time uh, way away from where the football field is and the school is. So they have to run to the to the locker room at halftime, and then the uh, away team stays on the field in the end zone. Same with Marvin. It's a decent amount away from the school. Thank you very much. Thank you. In my part of the bond presentation, I would like to um, discuss some of the financial aspects of a new proposed bond. Uh, first of all, I'd like to make the point that if the citizens, if you vote to put it on the ballot, it is approved in November, the county would not incur any dirt debt service during the current fiscal year to start uh, July 1. We would propose to do the same process that we used in 2016. That's for any design costs that we might incur during the fiscal year to basically have the county loan us until bonds are actually issued in fiscal year 2022. 
Uh, the next point is I'd like to give a little history on UCPS debt service, and I apologize if this is going to be redundant from the County Finance Department's presentation, but I will uh, reference information provided by your finance office. I don't have a color version, but this is the um, Union County Physical Year 2021 Proposed Budget and Brief, Union County Schools, on page two, which refers to UCPS debt service. In 2018, the actual debt service for outstanding bonds were 42.3 million. In 2019, it spiked to 53.2 million. And in the revised budget for this current physical year, it's showing 51.5 million. In the proposed 2021 budget, the figure falls substantially. It's proposed in the budget of 38.5 million, some $12 million drop. We had also requested some long-term debt information uh, from the finance department, and I'll just a uh, few years out in the future from that. In uh, 2022, it's proposed at 37.1 million. In 2023, proposed at 35.7. In 24, 32.2 million. And in 2025, proposed at 29.9. All the way down to when you come down to 2032, it drops into the seven figures. So it's a, a steady, if not drastic, but a steady decline as proposed as some of the old bonds for construction are paid off. And, and just personally, I'd, I'd like to give a note that I understand some of the commissioners may have concerns. These are certainly challenging times, and I can respect that. But I would just say uh, you may personally decide to vote against it if it becomes a referendum, and that's fine. That's certainly your right. But I would, I would put that we need to let the people decide. In my, uh, hard to believe, it's been 30-some years now in Union County, I can personally not recall a commission denying an opportunity for a proposed UCPS bond to be put on the ballot. Maybe before my time, but I don't recall in, during my time. So I will, uh, that's the information I wanted to propose on uh, past and future projected debt service, and then I'll turn that over. I guess the uh, county staff is up next. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. Manager, thank you for this opportunity to present to you our FY21 debt overview and also our total debt portfolio and total education cost. What we wanted to do today was provide to you an illustration of our current debt structure and our current tax rates associated with each type of debt by function. And then we also wanted to illustrate to you what the debt service impact would be for a $130 million bond issuance. Our total outstanding debt for Union County today is around $545 million. We have this broken down by function and by debt type. We have general obligation bonds outstanding, installment financing, and revenue bonds for water and sewer. A lot of questions that we get regarding our debt is what is this related to? General government debt that's outstanding, your most recently issued bonds included a Board of Elections renovation. That's included in your GO bonds. In your installment financing for general government, this is the balance that's left due on the judicial center that was built in the early 2000s. For your public safety debt for GO bonds, the majority of this is the most recently issued bonds for the sheriff's office renovation and the emergency services complex building. For your economic and physical development, your most recently two-thirds GO bonds covered the purchase of the industrial park that's your $20 million. And for your installment financing debt that's outstanding, that's the balance left on the Agriculture Services Center. Human services function for the county does not have any outstanding debt at all. 
For Union County Public Schools educational debt, we have around $280 million outstanding. These are bonds that were issued in early 2000s through the most recent bond. That was the 2016 voter approved debt. For your South Piedmont Community College outstanding debt for education, you have around $36 million. The majority of that is the most recent issued bonds for their current projects that are ongoing. For the Tyson Center, the STEM building, Building A and Building B renovations, as well as the classroom facility in Western Union County. For your culture and recreation outstanding debt, the majority of this is the new library that was also approved and this was in 2018, or actually 2016, for the new Southwest Union Library. And of course, your water and sewer bonds that are outstanding are on your 2015, 2017, and 2019 revenue bond issuances, and there's a whole bunch of projects that that was related to. The next slide illustrates our total debt service payments for the county. This includes both principal and interest payments for 2021 through 2044. And as you can see, our GO bonds will take us all the way through 2040. For 2021, your GO bond debt service payment is $43 million. Your installment financing debt is $6.8 million, and your revenue bond debt service payments are $10,316,000. Your total debt service that's included in your FY21 recommended budget is $60 million. This next slide illustrates your total debt service and fees associated with debt in your FY21 recommended budget. Each function is broken down separately for the debt service payments and fees associated with each function. As you can see, total debt service expenses related only to General governmental debt is around $50 million, which if you equate that to your current penny value is about 17.88 cents. This next slide illustrates our current debt service schedule for Union County Public Schools, which only goes back to 2020. I did, no, did not go back to prior years. And we have anticipated um, not issuing debt until the latter part of 2021 or early part of fiscal year 2022, if these bonds were to go to referendum, we would wait and work with Union County Public Schools to determine what their cash flow needs would be before we would actually go to market. Um, in comparison for your current year debt service payments for Union County Public Schools is $38.5 million. If we issued an additional $130 million of bonds, you can compare that to um, us adding 11.3 or the equivalent of a required tax rate increase of around four pennies. And that's based on uh, us using today's market. The bond rates are very low right now. However, we anticipate that they will begin to start increasing back up before we actually go to market in around 2022. So your total debt service payments would increase to around $48.5 million per year. This next slide illustrates our total education expense that is in your current recommended budget for FY21. For Union County Public Schools, total education expense is around $164 million. For South Piedmont Community College, your total education expense is around $6.5 million. This includes all debt service and fees, current expense, capital expense, and any other costs associated with the educational function. The equivalent tax rate based on your current penny value is around 61 cents. Do you have any questions? Ms. Rush. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the $144 million in the water and sewer, does yes. that count against us in this equation or, or is that all because it's paid through the enterprise fund? Right, it does not. It is covered by um, the utility rate payers. Right, so that, that you know, why, why lump it into the other county? I was illustrating your total outstanding debt portfolio for the entire county. Okay, does that have any effect on the ratings or rates that we may get? For our GO bonds, the credit rating agencies look at the county as a whole for our overall debt portfolio to see how we are managing everything. Mm -hmm. However, you do get a separate bond rating for your utility system versus your general obligation bonds. 
Okay, so so if we have and we had a proposed nine hundred and five million dollars worth of projects last November, um, will those affect the the ratings that we could get, or would those affect the? How do those affect us? As in this being lumped into this figure, they will not affect your geo bond debt credit rating directly. They will just look at them, but it's not going to affect our geo bond rating. They're going to look at your utility rates separately from right. your debt affordability perspective for your utility rates. So it wouldn't affect our ability to borrow? No, not for geo bonds. It does not. Okay. So with that 900, and so we have 144 million today. Correct. And over the next 10 years, will that number will go up considerably? For your, for your revenue bonds? For the for the revenue bonds, yeah. Yes, if you issue additional revenue bonds, it would go up. Okay, and you had um, you had on that list 10 million, 10 million, 10 million for revenue bonds, pretty consistent. That is correct. The debt um, is structured very consistent for revenue bonds. And that takes into account the new projects as well. No, it does not. That's your current existing debt. It does not add in any new debt that's not. Oh, issued. so that that's just 144 million. That's correct. Yes. So if we go to 905 million, that number could go up dramatically. If we issued that many more in revenue bonds, yes. Right. Or we can pay cash. Uh, we can, with making, what is it, 64 million versus 36 million, so almost getting getting pretty high, close to almost double. So that that's where that money would help offset those costs, right? For your utility but, rates. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Thank you, Beverly. You're welcome. Thank you, Beverly. You're welcome. Mr. Chairman and board members, I want to thank the Union County Public Schools for their presentation. I also want to thank Beverly Lyles for providing the county debt overview. I stated previously in February of this year, we held a joint meeting with the Board of Education. And at that time, the idea of a potential bond request was discussed. At this time, unfortunately, we do not have sufficient information necessary to determine the escalation factors, inflation, and timing of available funding. Guidelines recommended by the GFOA for a multi-year capital debt planning provides four key components. First, identifying needs. Second, determining financial impacts. Third, prioritizing requests. And fourth, the development of a comprehensive financial plan. I would suggest that we establish an ad hoc committee of staff and designated board members from Union County and our education partners, UCPS and uh, South Piedmont Community College, to develop a comprehensive multi year capital plan for education. I would make uh, the a commitment that we will identify a facilitator and county staff would begin this process within the next 90 days. As indicated in the UCPS presentation, work is needed to determine uh, an estimation of final cost for all the projects uh, and there needs to be agreement on escalation factors, inflation, and timing of available funding. The ad hoc committee would work to answer these questions and provide a five to 10 year capital plan for education in Union County. Additionally, county staff had already identified a comprehensive financial plan as a must do over the next fit for the next fiscal year for county capital projects. We would anticipate bringing the education capital plan and the county capital plan together in a report presentation uh, to the board in the first quarter of calendar year 2021. One of my primary commitments to this board and to the community since taking the role of county manager has been to maintain and strengthen our financial position. I feel strongly that planning for our capital expenditures is needed. Based upon the information provided to you by our finance staff, you can see uh, where we have significant financial obligations due to previously issued debt, the majority of that being for Union County Public School projects. I'm confident that uh, an appropriate planning process will provide for a roadmap that our board and uh, Union County residents can support 
for future funding of our education capital needs. Uh, I've provided you with a potential action that could be taken by the board if there's interest uh, in this recommendation, and I believe the clerk has passed that out to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Helms. Yes, sir. Can I make a motion or recommendation to establish an ad hoc committee of staff of Union County and our education partners, Union County Public Schools and South Piedmont Community College to develop a plan for a general obligation bond referendum that supports their capital needs for the potential 2022 March or November voter approval. This committee would be in charge of identifying the needs, determine the financial impacts, prioritization of request, and developing a comprehensive financial plan. This would allow staff to work collaboratively in an effort to put forth a plan that both bodies can support and bring to the community for a potential referendum in 2022. Okay, we have a motion discussion. Commissioner Rush. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm supportive of the motion. I think that there's some, I, th I think there is a lot of stuff that we need to look at. And one of the things is what impact is growth going to have? Uh, what kind of, I, I think it's probably too low of a number that you have on here. Um, we're looking at two and a half percent, give or take, growth in this county projected, and, and it could be even more than that. Um, we've got a, a huge, especially with all the infrastructure, when you put as many millions of dollars in infrastructure for water and sewers we're talking about doing, growth is going to explode in this county. And I think we all need to be prepared for that, just like with the capacity questions that I asked. Um, the only other option I see is, you know, for the bond this year would be that we, um, you yeah, know, have some more discussions and, and do it. Yeah, I think we could vote as late as July or August to put it as long as we get it on the ballot in time. Uh, so I don't think this is the break dead, I don't think this is the drop dead date for this year doing something. Um, but I do think that there's a lot, I, I think we're underestimating what we're going to need. Um, I think that there's a, a new high school, middle school um, on the horizon uh, easily, you know, when we talk about breaking loose. Everybody is preparing. The development community is preparing for a uh, busting loose of, of growth in Union County. And I think the school system really, you, you should too. Um, so you did the right thing. I think this is the right direction of getting stuff together and, and being prepared and trying to get ahead. Um, but we, d I think it's, I think you gotta go more further. I think you gotta look at more. I think you gotta look at building new schools. So um, if, um, I'm more than happy to support the motion, um, but if there is something that we have to do this year, uh, I think we could always come back maybe in July and look at what's going on, but um, I think there's a lot more planning that we have to do. Mr. Helms. Yeah, I'd like to explain, explain where I'm coming from just a little bit because my motion is uh, and to replace the, the bond, request for the bond for this year. And when I go back and look at 2016, uh, there was quite a bit of work, quite a bit of detail presented uh, to uh, both boards. And we, even with that detail, I think Sun Valley, we're right now $10 million over what was estimated. So I think it's critical that we don't get ourselves in that box again. Uh, I agree that we need to do something with the schools. I like the idea that it uh, includes South Piedmont that we make sure our total education uh, community is supported uh, because we've got a fantastic teamwork between South Piedmont and UCPS and Wingate College uh, that uh, this county is proud of. So I think the recommendation will, uh, will allow us to do sufficient planning and all partners would uh, participate to ensure that we do what's best for the county. Thank you, sir. Right. I feel like I need to say this for my friends on the school board. I don't know how they will feel after the day. In fe February at the Ag Center when we had the joint meeting, 
I told them that I would support putting it on the bond. But good Lord, all that has happened since February, uh, I had no idea everything that was coming at us. I still don't know when we're going to recover. The numbers going up again, friends that younger friends in their 40s going to the hospital or staying at home that have been diagnosed with it now. I guess I've learned uh, one of our commissioners is uh, always, you never, he holds his cards so close to the vest you can never see them till he lays them down. And I'm learning. I said I would do it and it pains me greatly not to vote for this, but with all that the county's facing, uh, I apologize for my promise, but I, I feel very bad about what we have went through on sales tax laws. And uh, I'm with Commissioner Helms and Russian and their ideas. I'd just like to uh, thank Ms. Merrill and Ms. Uh, Hintel for meeting with us last week and sharing the information and uh, for your presentations today. I don't think there's any uh, uh, doubt. Uh, I came to the county early on in about 2011 and it was about the time that uh, Central Carolina Council of Government uh, was doing their Connect Our Future study. Uh, it showed tremendous growth for this, not just this county, but this entire 14 or 15 county region. We've seen it every day since then. We continue to see it. It's a dynamic area of the country. It's a country that people want to come and live uh, because of the quality of life and the quality of work and the opportunities that present itself. And that certainly doesn't take away from Union County uh, public school system, which you have heard today is stellar. And we are proud of that fact. Uh, another opportunity that I had early on sitting in this same seat as chairman in 2011 was we were in the process of uh, fixing to commence on a revaluation. That was about the time that the uh, housing uh, had crashed and burned, the economy was at the, at the bottom, and we, we, we didn't have comps, you couldn't find comps to even do a reval with. I share some of the concerns of, of Commissioner Ray from the standpoint we don't know what education is going to look like. We talk about uh, virtual education. We talk about being virtual classrooms next year. What's the cost of that? We talk about classrooms with half as many students. We talk about food service. We talk about buses with a third or a half of the students. We talk about alternate days. What impact is that going to have on the school system and our system of education? And in addition, what kind of impact is it going to have on our families in Union County? Uh, I have uh, one right here in Union County that has children in the Union County uh, school system and more on the way. And in Charlotte Mecklenburg and the surrounding area. And they're scared to death what they're going to do about child care and things like that. It's going to have a tremendous impact. We just have information that we, it's, it's a new world and things that we just don't know about at this point in time. Um, so I, I, I fully support um, the idea, but I, I agree with Commissioner Rushing and the board that we, we just need further study and we need to all work together, come together as a county and as a school system uh, to, to develop a strategic plan for the future. So uh, I'll, I'll can I get, uh, can I ask one more? Sure, question? go ahead. Uh, if this is this something that again, this is not time sensitive that we make the decision tonight. Can we make it at our J July meeting instead of uh, making the decision tonight? Because I would like I've not I've tried to contact uh, Chairman Merrill, and I think we've been playing phone tag for about two weeks now, trying to ask some questions on this and, and haven't been able to touch base with her. Um, can we? Does, would you mind delaying any action until July so we can talk about it some more and get more information? I'd be honest with you, I don't see how the data can be gathered to identify uh, the actual cost and the, and the needs. 
in that short of time frame. I think the motion states that we have a joint committee that studies it, and that's going to take months. Right. And it will ensure that all parties are represented, and they've got the got the valid n numbers. Also, I think Chairman Simpson uh, hit right on it. We don't know what next year is going to be. And, and I agree. So with I'd that. like to go ahead and act on this motion. I agree with that, but I I do. I do look at it as, you know, if there's something on this list that needs to be done within the next two years, because that's, and that's the problem is that we have to wait two years to do anything. So is there something on this list that's a priority um, that maybe we can find even another way to fund it? Or, um, you know, is there something on here that, that absolutely has to be done before we can get all this in place? Because if you do it in 2022, the earliest opportunity we would have would be the primary election of that year. Commissioner Rushing, actually, the board would have to take action on the request for a bond issue tonight to start the process. It's a three-part process. You would have action tonight, action in July, and action at your first meeting in August to meet the deadline for something to go on the, the bond on the uh, ballot for November. Okay, so there's no, there, we don't just have to put it on the ballot for November. Correct. Okay. Is that a new process? Or? No, no. We, we laid out that we had to have something done by June and February. I'm, I'm pretty sure we shared that date, that June was our deadline for knowing if there needed to be something on the ballot for November. Okay. okay. And we've pushed it as far as we can. We did look at that okay. closely. Further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Takes us to item 39, adoption of the fiscal year 2021 operating and capital budget. Mr. Chairman, we would like to ask Deputy County Manager Michelle Lancaster if she would address this item and make the necessary comments. Thank you, Mr. Manager. As the board heard, you had your public hearing earlier um, this afternoon and you had three speakers. Um, the, the recommended budget before you maintains the 73.09 cent tax rate and tonight you're just being asked to adopt that budget for FY21. Motion to adopt the physical year 2021 operating and capital budget ordinance and the associated tax rates and fees. Any discussion? Well, I'll comment. <laughs> uh, just, just a couple of items uh, with regard to the budget. I want to uh, uh, commend Commissioner, uh, or rather uh, Manager Watson uh, when we started out early in the year, I told him he'd be drinking from a fire hose, and I didn't know how many different fire hoses was coming. I was just talking about the normal fire hoses, but uh, certainly has worked diligently with the financial staff and the uh, budget folks to pull this budget together. Uh, uh, Ms. Lyles did a great job in showing uh, where a lot of that money goes and uh, the cost associated with it. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, Again, thanks for, for bringing in a uh, budget with no tax increase. Uh, the impact, uh, several, to me, several things have shown up this year uh, in the budget. One of those being the impact of, of the uh, COVID-19 and its impact on sales tax. We know that sales tax goes for our fire service and goes to a lot of places, particularly our school debt service. And that's had a huge impact and probably will continue to have an impact on our ability for repayment. Um, we, uh, this board made some decisions uh, several years back with regard to um, our fund balance. And so there's not a lot of money there for PAYGO uh, that, has an, that, that, that has an impact on us as well. The other uh, item that I would be remiss if I did not mention one of the first things I want to do when I got elected in 2011 was fix the uh, cost of fire service 
and we have had uh, stakeholder meeting after stakeholder meeting and discussion after discussion and roundabout and consultants and you name it all. Uh, and uh, I'll I, I go back to my rotary uh, four-way test. Uh, is, it, is it fair to all concerned? Well, we, we say that, but I think sometimes there's some things that just can't be quite fair to all concerned. Uh, it's, a, it's a compromise, but when you live in a county that has the transition from the west to the east, uh, you have to try and find uh, the best uh, situation possible. And I believe uh, to go in this direction provides those uh, urban uh, fire departments, uh, their continued autonomy and, and, and ability to work on the issues that arise in their area and also to continue to fund our uh, rural departments as well. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Takes us to item 40, COVID-19 update. Thank you, Chairman Simpson. I'm going to provide a brief update tonight uh, or this afternoon on COVID-19. Uh, Mr. Joyner would be with us, but this is the time for our community call on Monday. So he, we, we're splitting duties and he's taking care of the community call. Um, I just want to highlight a few things. So our positive cases to, uh, right now, are my newest number, 758 cases. So since June the 5th, so the last 10 days, our case count has increased almost 35%. We went from 562 cases on June 5th to 758 cases this afternoon. And we're a little concerned about that. And, and I want to provide some information to you that we would like to share with the public and those who are watching and, and tuning into the meeting today. We have 429 cases that are no longer being monitored. So that's 57% of our cases, which is a, it was a good thing. So 300, more than 300 cases are continuing to be monitored. Our percentage of positive tests is hovering about 9%. So when you look at the people who are tested, the number of the percentage of those that are positive, we're around 9%. We would like to continue to see that flattened and then to start to decline over time. We have averaged about 18 new cases per day in, in the, the last week. And the prior week to that, we averaged 16 cases per day. And you'll recall at the beginning, we were really probably more around the seven case per day rate and then we've started to see this significant jump. Additionally, we've seen the ages of these cases get younger. So we know that early on the ages were, were a lot older. We were seeing a lot of congregate sites that were being impacted and we have seen that really start to, to be um, stabilized. Today from the 302 cases that are being monitored at congregate sites, uh, we are only monitoring four people from out of those three that are in congregate sites out of those 302. So the majority of these folks are just in the community, um, just like we are. They're going to work, they're going places, they're doing things. Uh, four of those are at congregate sites. Our hospital capacity is limited. As you know, this is one of the things that we monitor. Over the past week, we've seen the numbers go up in terms of inpatient capacity. I had some conversation with Mike Lutz Friday and we're continuing to monitor those numbers and if you look at our positive cases about 8.5 percent of people who are positive are ending up in the hospital not in critical care necessarily but having to be hospitalized at some point point. and so we want to keep that we'd like for that number to go down um, testing capacity and availability is of course up which does contribute to us seeing more case numbers go up and we realize that but we want to continue the testing because we know that once people know in the community that they have come into contact with someone, we would like to know if they're positive or not as soon as possible. And that's really where we're seeing the majority of our cases. They have made known contact with someone, which is positive in terms of we're able to manage that contact tracing pretty well. But that tells us that people are coming in contact with each other and then becoming infected with the, with the disease. There have been 24 deaths as of this afternoon. Um, so we've added two deaths since Friday. Um, that's about a little more than 3% of our positive cases. Um, and so we think that that's a, a number that's important to continue to watch. And those, and those numbers are in the higher age group. So the 60 plus are where our deaths are occurring. And additionally, I just wanna add that we wanna continue to be supportive of the opening up of our economy. As you mentioned, sales tax is important to us and how we operate as a government. But we do want people to take the following guidelines seriously. 
going out when necessary, staying in if you are a family member, have underlying health conditions, wash your hands often, space yourselves appropriately. I think you all got a button, stay six feet away from each other when you can. If you need to go out, do it safely. If you can do things at home, do them at home. And so that's what I'll leave you with today. Thank you. Questions? Mr. Oh, Rushing has a question. Never mind. You, you find the show. Yeah, go ahead. I think you answered it. Uh, well, I was asking about the, the, the deaths and the testing has increased. It has uh, increased. We have some companies do, doing testing maybe, or is the county doing any testing? No, we, we are not. We are still not in the testing business. We are allowing the hospitals to do that. Atrium is really our largest tester. Of CVS has added taste, testing ability. Novant's practices do testing. So we want to continue to see that rise. Um, we do. Um, Atrium had been doing some community testing. I think you probably saw that advertised. They were going into particular places. They were at a school site a couple of different weeks. They've had to bring that back, ramp that down some because of staffing issues that they have. And so again, I talked to Mike about that Friday. They are working hard to get additional staffing so they can continue that mobile testing so that we can continue. Again, we want the positives identified because it'll help us manage the disease much better. Can I ask you a sure. couple of similar questions? The, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the rate you said was currently 8%? Yes. And how is that trended from when we started beginning to take that information to currently? All of our numbers are going up. So everything's going up. Um, our, our deaths, again, we think we've probably got that older population fairly maintained, but we've seen some younger deaths. We've seen, uh, I think, three of the last Five have been in the 40s, in the 40 age bracket, um, some with underlying health conditions and some without. So that continues to concern us. Um, it really is about maintaining that distance even when, if you're um, deemed positive in your own home to make sure that you're separating, doing those things. Again, kind of following those guidelines to make sure that we're not passing this uh, as readily as, as it seems to be happening right now. And is the, the pers the death rates increasing as a result of the increasing positives or is the death the death rate is, is still staying pretty steady so it's at three percent it's low and again we want to see that happen but the the, the uh, data point that I gave you of about 8.5 percent of folks are ending up in the hospital which isn't a, a huge number but that's about 60 of the people who have been infected in Union County that have had to be hospitalized at some point so while not necessarily critical, they are ending up in the hospital, and we know, you know there can be a potential effect if you're that sick and you have to be hospitalized. So we'd really like to maintain all of those at at least a flat rate and then start to see some decline. And at this point, we're still flat in many areas, but we have, we've yet to see that decline start to occur. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Takes us to manager's comments. Mr. Chairman, um, thank you for your comments uh, regarding the budget and budget development, um, but I would be remiss if I did not also recognize staff, uh, Michelle Lancaster and her uh, work group uh, to include the budget office and Blake Hart and his staff and interim finance director Debbie Cox and her staff and all of the work that they put in uh, to the development of the budget um, to Brian Matthews and Patrick Nyland uh, and their respective uh, division directors who also uh, put in uh, a great deal of work uh, in uh, reviewing current operations, uh, redirecting uh, activities and funds uh, so that we can have the uh, biggest impact to meet the needs uh, of our residents. Uh, with regard to uh, fire tax and, and fire funding in Union County, um, I, I have to give uh, special credit to Assistant County Manager Patrick Nyland. Patrick's not in the room with us right now. He's watching in the other room. Uh, because of the numbers we're allowed to have in this particular room. But uh, when Patrick joined us uh, last year, this was the first thing 
that uh, he was charged with, uh, working, taking, picking up the project um, that had been worked on uh, and going out and working with the volunteer fire departments in our county uh, to, to come to a resolution that uh, everyone could live with and that would meet our needs. Uh, thank you to the volunteer fire departments uh, for working with us, but again, uh, Patrick uh, led that initiative on behalf of staff and, and I sincerely appreciate that. With regard to sales tax, um, as I stated in my budget message, um, you know, the, the impact of the loss of sales tax um, this fiscal year and what we project for next fiscal year um, did uh, create some funding uh, issues. We were not able to uh, address and fund all of the needs um, that were requested. Um, and to that, um, I would say to the Union County Public Schools, we, we hear you and, and we understand your needs. And uh, as we go forward, if we find that our revenues are exceeding our projections, as I stated in my budget message, we will be back uh, to the Board of County Commissioners um, with a prioritized list of projects and funding needs of how to distribute uh, that revenue if it were to materialize. So uh, with that, I thank you very much and have a good evening. Mr. Hales. Yeah, thank you very much. I uh, appreciate your comments, uh, Mr. Chairman, on the fire tax. Uh, we have developed a method that I think is equitable across the board. One of the things I find very interesting is that from 50 to 80 percent of the people in the fire fee districts will pay less. And so therefore it will be distributed equally and I think that's what's fair as we do in our other tax districts. And I appreciate the work that uh, uh, Chairman Simpson did a part of a part of a task force that worked on this as well, like for years. It's the rushing and, oil. Uh, so we've come to fruition, and I think it, I think it's a good thing, and it it uh, provides equity throughout the county. Uh, I also would like to note that Miss Lyles, you did a good job. Congratulations on your promotion. It's obvious why you got the promotion, and we thank you for all your hard work. Blake did an outstanding job. Uh, one of the things I can say during this process is that our staff has been totally transparent and uh, they are all to be commended uh, and Mr. Watson's leadership and uh, Michelle, y'all, uh, we appreciate what you do, plus our assistant county managers as well. I look forward to working with our education partners to come up with a plan, a process that'll address their needs and their concerns in probably one of the most challenging times that I have seen in all my years, and unfortunately I have a lot of them, that I've never seen anything like this. So we've got some challenges that we have to work through, and I think together we can work through them and uh, provide for Union County. Thank you. Mr. Ray. Well, this is one of those questions I, when I ask for everybody to pray for this county and its leaders, I know you're doing that, but continue to pray because I, like Commissioner Helms and all the other commissioners, I truly don't know what the future holds for us. I put my faith in God, and uh, I just hope this thing's over quickly. Thank you. Mr. Rushing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wish everybody... Uh, Hope you have a happy 4th of July and safe 4th of July. And I look forward to uh, starting the next um, fiscal year with high hopes and, and uh, a lot of challenges in the coming years. Commissioner Aikmas. No comments this evening. Uh, my only additional comment would be uh, sometimes the things get uh, done in consent agenda that we, we miss. 
and remind you that we did take action for next month. And instead of uh, first and third Monday, we have the second Monday. It'll be the only meeting we'll hold in July. So make that uh, recognition of that action. Uh, at this time, I would uh, make a motion that the board go into closed session for the following purposes. To consult with an attorney in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege in accordance with General Statute 143.318.11A3. And to establish or to instruct the public body staff or negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of the public body in negotiating the price and other material terms of a contract or proposed contract for the acquisition of a portion of the following real property as well as a public utility easement in accordance with General Statute 143.318.11A5 owned by the heirs of Maxine Cunningham Tomberlin, file number 03E0019, Union County Clerk of Superior Court, Janice Westberg, Richard Herbert Tomberlin, and John Michael Tomberlin, described by deed recorded in book 357, page 172 of the Union County Registry, parcel number 0702103B, and property owned by Anna, Anna Dale Owners Association Incorporated, identified as parcel 0702137, for the possible use of, for an equalization tank with related easements related to sewer operations. All in favor say aye. Aye. 